G'day Legends, it's Mark here from North Oz and thank you for joining me in today's video where I'm going to be giving you a three month review of the EcoFlow Delta and we're also going to be answering the question of whether or not something like this power station can replace a professionally installed dual battery in your four wheel drive setup. Let's get stuck into it. Now before I take the EcoFlow Delta out of its very nice and um, also pretty well sealed case, I want to talk to you very quickly about the fact that EcoFlow did send this out to me. I didn't go out and purchase one of these. However, I was actually going to go out and buy one of these anyway because I just don't have enough amp hours. I don't have enough power in my Hilux Rogue setup, which is my long-term touring. Well, I'm building it out to be a long-term touring vehicle. So this was on my list of things to get next. And the main reason for that is my Hilux Rogue only has one spot for a battery and that is under the bonnet. Now you can't put lithium batteries under the bonnet due to efficiency and heat and a number of other things. So I was stuck with putting the only size I could in uh, under the bonnet, which is basically 45 amp hours of usable uh, lead acid uh, power. So it is uh, 90 amp hours from memory, um, but we can only use 45 amp hours of that. So that led me to looking into some power stations. Now I was very lucky that EcoFlow right at that time I was looking at power stations, they contacted me and said, would I like to try one of their products? And they're not paying me for it. It is literally just them saying, here, try it out. Let us know what you think of it and make uh, a couple of videos on it um, if you like it or even if you don't like it. So that's the background. Um, I've been using this since February. Uh, I've taken it on a few camping trips now and there are a lot of things that I like about it and there's really not a lot that I don't like about it, which is which is excellent. Um, I guess it's really good for EcoFlow too because it means that they're doing their job, but it's also a reflection on power stations in general and where the technology is at. And that's really what we're going to get stuck into today. So it is going to be a little bit of a wordy video. It's going to be a lot of me talking and giving you a lot of facts and my own experiences using the power stations and whether or not something like this is worth the 2000-ish dollar price tag that are on these units. Now, this is a hundred amp hours of fully usable um, power. It is a lithium um, setup. So if you don't know much about lithium and uh, lead acid batteries, there's heaps of videos out there you guys can look at, but basically unlike a lead acid battery, you can use 100% of the power in this over and over and over again, um, but it starts to degrade as you take it down to 0%. Um, but it's got a lot of cycles in it, something, uh, it's a huge number anyway, where basically if you took it camping once a week, it'll probably last you, and you took it down to 0%, it'll probably last you 30 odd years before it gets down to 80% efficiency. So it's not something that I'm really worried about. I did the maths on that a long time ago um, and it was something that I wasn't concerned about uh, regarding the, the lithium degradation and things like that. Now, something that's also a little bit exciting about this because I haven't actually touched this in about three weeks. Um, this, I used it on a camping trip. I used it for uh, one full day of camping and also a night, and then also used it into the next day as well. So it was a little bit over 24 hours of camping, about 36 or so hours. And the exciting thing about that, you probably think it's not very exciting, but the exciting thing about it is that I haven't touched it since then. So I don't know uh, how much battery it has lost since I used it last. So we'll see how well it also holds battery as well. If it's got 0% battery, then we know it doesn't hold battery very well. But that's something as well that we're going to have a look at today too. And I'm gonna give you, of course, like I said, my experiences with it so far. So let's get stuck to that now. Now guys, if you're really interested in the specifications and you know exactly what it does in terms of you know the inverter it's got in it and all that sort of stuff, I'm not gonna spend my time in this video going through all that. We made, uh, and when I say we, my dad and I made a dedicated video of that where we unboxed it, went through all the information for that. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a little card uh, up there for you to click. Uh, and you know, I'll also leave it as a little link at the end of the video so you guys can click on that too. So just so you know, if you want to find out more about this product, of course, uh, we've gone through that already. I've also done camping videos where I've used this as well. I believe I've done two camping videos where I feature this product. So if you would like to see how I use it in my camping setup, I also demonstrate that as well, but I will also be able to talk about my experiences and how I use it as part of my camping setup flow as we get into this video. So the very first thing that I, of course, really like about this is the fact that it has a, a case and a cover. Um, I have used power stations in the past where they don't come with a case similar to this. So this is a very um, welcomed um, item. And not only that, but it doesn't just cover it, uh, it covers it and then some as well. So it covers it kind of like a cap to this point, and then it goes down a little bit further 
past the seam where it's got some Velcro which holds it down and I haven't had any issues with it uh, popping out of its case or anything like that and I carry it exactly like this in on my back seat strapped in with a seat belt. Um, I don't tie it down or put it in the back. Mostly I don't put it in the back because one, I don't use the back seats for anything, so it's a great opportunity. I can also, uh, to use the extra space, but I can also plug some things in like my camera gear. I can charge all that while I'm driving and it's easier to have that on the back seat as opposed to in the tub where um, everything's just gonna go all over the place when the second I hit a speed bump or when I hit the rough stuff. So. Um, the case, it hasn't slipped out of the case or anything like that. It stays in the back seat, very secure. So, and like I said, guys, I haven't taken it out of its case since the last time I went camping. So if we open it up, you'll see that the handles are still usable while it's in the case, which is very handy. Something that I've appreciated as well. Um, and one more thing that I really appreciate about it is the zip as well. Um, now, yes, I'm only talking about the cover, uh, but it is something that is often overlooked in a lot of products is that the covers will either be non-existent or they'll be um, inferior. I've purchased some very expensive products in the past and you know it's really disappointing when the covers let them down, uh, especially when you're paying two grand. Uh, I believe this is on sale, so I'll leave some information for that for you guys um, on the screen there uh, if you wanna purchase something similar because I believe there is a sale on for this right now. Um, but you know, it's really disappointing when cases don't um, match the quality of the product. Um, yeah, so I, I do like the fact that this case is well built. Um, it hasn't frayed, it hasn't, the, the zip on it has been very solid so far as well. So um, that's all I'll say about the cover, but, and I might have talked a bit long about the cover, but you know, when it comes to using these products and spending your money on this product, you have to know everything about it. And the fact that the case for it and the cover for it is high quality is a very important thing. Um, you'll notice that I carried the 240 uh, charger for it as well because I've got that many 12 volt products and also 240 volt products for different things, I lose cables and they get lost very quickly. Um, and I and they all end up looking the same and then I'm just like, I don't know what this is for and I chuck it out. So I like to keep this in the case and it does stay in there, which is, which is fantastic. So um, 240, just to charge it up, just charges up in the back there in that little hatch here. So you just open that bad boy up there and you can charge it up at home. So um, obviously if you can find some charging points around campsites and things like that as well, this thing will charge up in something like two hours or something like that. It's ridiculous how fast this thing charges. Um, and again, I just normally charge up the night before I go camping and good as gold. Um, don't need to worry about charging it for long periods of time. Um, and you know, whenever I get ready to go camping, it's always a night before. So if I want to go camping on the Friday night uh, after work, then I'll put my stuff on a charge on Thursday night and I'll pack everything away on that Thursday. So the fact that this is ready to go um, and I can just plug it in, charge it up right before uh, at the very beginning of what I'm doing, put all my food and stuff away, cargo box up on top of the, um, the ute rack. And then by the time I get around to putting the last thing away, which will be this um, and the fridge, of course, uh, then this has already been fully charged. So that is very handy, that uh, little cable there. Um, and I've charged it up a couple of times so far. So here we go, let's get this out and I'll show you exactly what it is that we're looking at. I'm gonna turn this on for the first time since I've been camping, which is a few weeks ago. So we'll see what kind of battery it's held. Hmm, interesting. So I uh, may have charged this before I put it away um, a few weeks ago. Yes, I did actually and that wasn't particularly smart, but the point still remains the same. It's still on 100% once I charged it up and that was a few weeks ago. So it does retain its battery percentage. The test is still valid. Um, so yeah, that wasn't particularly smart on my part. I didn't think I'd charged it, but there you go. Um, I was actually one step ahead of myself the whole time, guys. That doesn't happen very often, me being organized for camping trips um, well in advance. So the good news about this though, is that exactly what I've proven is that you can charge it up or use it and you can still store it and it will still maintain its battery percentage which works out perfectly because to be honest i didn't remember what battery percentage i had it on when i left my campsite so that works out well still on 100 percent perfect again i really like this display the display is something that i appreciate tells you your input your output and how many hours you have left now the hours is a bit of a sticking point for me because it doesn't average out, uh, if that makes sense. So if you are, say, charging your um, uh, fridge off this, which is what I do, I power my fridge off this, 
Uh, what will happen is as that fridge is cycling and as that power draw has increased, what will happen is you'll see the hours drop down to like four or five or whatever it is. Um, not quite that, but you get what I mean. It will drop significantly um, because that bases it on the power draw at that point in time. Now, the issue with that is that you don't have an idea of how long it's going to last for when it's not in that, um, when it's not in that power draw. So a little bit of a sticking point, a lot of the other, actually every battery management system that I've tried out so far does the exact same thing. So it's not a particularly bad thing, but it is just something to keep in mind if you notice that those hours start dropping down um, and it's like, oh no, I've only got two hours or one hour or 45 minutes left to use and you're doing something like uh, using an induction cooktop, for example, uh, you're probably only gonna use that cooktop for maybe, I don't know, whatever, 20, 25 minutes or something, you're still going to have battery remaining. So that's just something if you're new to the battery management game, um, that's something to just keep an eye on. Uh, now, I do have a list here to keep me on task. Now, the very first thing that impressed me about this was the efficiency. Now, I was surprised. Uh, yes, I did go camping when it was a little bit cooler, which helped, but not that much. I have camped when I've had my uh, lithium set up in my product, uh, where I had the dual battery wired in and the efficiency was nowhere near. Now, what I mean by efficiency is I use this for 24 hours and it used up 25%. I was expecting to get maybe 45 to 50% on 24 hours. Now, the reason for that is I keep it in the tray where it's hot and I use it to power not only my cameras and my lights, but I also use it to power my uh, fridge. Now I was using the big compartment of my fridge set to three degrees and I had the small compartment, which is normally the freezer wasn't, wasn't running. So I am expecting to be using a little bit more than that when I'm going camping. However, 25% in 24 hours is something that I've never seen before from my battery management systems before and from my batteries before. I was, I was actually shocked and shocked in a good way, which means that I can go camping for a whole weekend and I don't have to worry about uh, anything. I don't have to worry about putting solar into this. I don't need to worry about use swapping uh, between all my different batteries to try to get the power that I need to keep the fridge running basically is mostly what I need power for and also my camera batteries. So for me, the fact that this lasted as long as it did was a big surprise for me. And I've used my lithium setup in the past before, which was a 100 amp hour lithium battery, and it was just wired into the vehicle um, by a professional. And the thing that I noticed about that was it would drop so fast. Like sometimes I would only get, like in one night, especially on the hotter nights, I would get, I would lose 60%. And that can't just be the fact that it is the battery itself. It has to be a number of things. It's it's the cables that go to it, you're losing efficiency. It's the fact that as it's charging, again, you've got all these cables running to it and you lose efficiency through there, you lose heat through there. So there's a lot of things that this avoids. And I think what this does, one really well is the fact that it doesn't have all these cables coming out of it. You just plug your stuff straight into it and you're golden. And you don't have all these different cables running to your DC to DC charger and all these different things. So that's a very positive thing. And I think that helps a lot with efficiency. And the second thing that I think that really helps that is the fact that it is a good quality setup. It's got good quality lithium um, ions in it and batteries in it. And I don't, I'm not a professional. I don't know how lithium batteries work like really well. I have, have a basic understanding of voltages and things like that and how it's all formed. But I understand that the battery that I had before, which is about five to $600 battery, it is not as good quality as what this is here. And I can say that with confidence, 100%. And, you know, I think that shows a lot in the way that it drew the power uh, and the limited amount of power that it used. So that is something that I was really excited about and something that completely shocked me when I was getting ready to film this video. That was, I wasn't expecting to be, uh, you know, writing about it and then talking about the fact that this was as efficient as it was. I just thought it would be going through the same amount of power as my 100 amp hours of just my normal battery, dual battery setup, but that is not the case. I was very impressed with this. Uh, so that was, that was my first big point, was the fact that it was so efficient. And I think that shocked me, and I think it will shock you guys too, pardon the pun, I think that will shock you guys too if you choose to go with a setup like this. Now, the other thing that surprised me about this unit was the fact that it was so light. And you know, I had my 100 amp hour 
lithium battery that I had, which was just the battery by itself and in my old setup. And it was somehow a similar size and weight to this setup here. I just, I struggle to understand how they can fit the cooling system in here with all the fans and the battery itself and also the battery management system with the inverter. I am, you know, I'm shocked, I'm surprised, I'm whatever, you know, whatever synonyms you want to chuck in there, I am very shocked that they can fit everything in here, all these outputs in the front here too. And, you know, the fact that it is, you know, like, I just don't understand how it can be so light. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a surprise to me. And the fact that it is so light makes it, I think, accessible for people who are a bit older as well, who, you know, want to have maybe something like this that they can keep either around the house for power at home, because that is a feature that you can use it for when you're not using it on the road. But also on the road, you can just tuck this away somewhere and you're not worried about it, you know, flying from one side of the car to the other because it weighs so much. So in terms of tie downs as well, it's got these great big handles here too, which you can easily just put a, you know, elastic cable um, to keep it, you know, wherever you want to keep it. If you have tie downs in your, in your car. Um, but for me, I mean, I just use a seatbelt, just the, just a lap seatbelt for it and it keeps it exactly where it is. So um, in terms of, you know, in terms of lightweight and how easily they can fit everything in this package, it does blow me away that the technology is getting to this point. And I think it's, it's only improving as well, which is fantastic too. Uh, and you know, the reason why I went with this 100 amp hours, you're probably wondering why I didn't go with a bigger model is 100 amp hours for me when I measured it up was the perfect size for me, both one for how much output that I need because I don't run things like induction cooktops and 240, I don't do much of that. The only 240 I'm gonna be using is when I'm going to be doing my big lap of Australia, which is gonna be for my computer, but again, that won't draw much power either. So I'm not using a lot of 240. And you know, so for me, I think the 100 amp hour was perfect uh, and I'm very happy with my decision. And it struck a good balance of size as well in its physical size, but also the size of the power unit in it. And I felt like if I got anything bigger, like, you know, I'm not gonna, uh, I don't need a portable station like this to last like six days. Um, that's just ridiculous because, you know, at that point you're using solar, you're getting set up at places for most of the time anyway, you're driving a lot so you can charge this as well. So, you know, I don't feel like I really needed to have a huge amount of power past 100 amp hours. And remember, keep in mind, I still got 45 amp hours in the vehicle as well, which charges up constantly. So I've always got that 45 amp hours as long as I'm moving. Um, so the light weight of it, yeah, again, blew my mind. So we'll keep moving, but if it's something that, you know, the packaging of it is something that you really need to consider if you wanna have that backup power, just in case your power in a caravan goes or the power in your, you know, your dual battery decides to, you know, decides to not work because of all the different wires you have as well. This thing's gonna be a very reliable unit as long as I keep this little packaging safe. There's no wires, there's no fuses I need to worry about. You know, it's all very nice and together, which I think gives me good peace of mind when I'm traveling. Now you're probably wondering, how exactly do I use this? Now you guys can have a look at my videos where I've used this before, but very simply, I just store it on the back seat where I don't keep anything, mostly just clothes and stuff. And then I take it onto or into the tub. So I have the tailgate down, put into the tub, and then I unplug my fridge from the dual battery setup that I have. So I've just got an Anderson plug that runs to a uh, to 45 amp hours of power underneath the bonnet. And then I unplug it from there, and then I plug it straight into here. So for me, that's how I use this. And then once I want to start moving again, I want to you know, move somewhere from my camp or something like that, then I'll unplug my fridge from here back into my uh, dual battery setup, and then this goes back onto the back seat. So that's pretty much how I use it. That that's the um, that's kind of like my camping workflow uh, where I use the EcoFlow, and yeah, so that's kind of the setup. And for me. It works, it works brilliantly. I, I think that it's a very good setup. Uh, I don't want any more power in my Hilux setup. And when I add my um, power, my solar panels to this as well, 
that's going to give me that extra flexibility that I really need. And I'm not gonna do uh, solar panels on the roof, I'm just gonna get those um, uh, one of those portable systems that just fold out. So I think that's gonna pair with this very nicely um, and it's gonna get me off grid for a lot longer too. So like you, I'm a really big full drive um, and also gear enthusiast. This whole, you know, it's it's what I do, you know, at North Oz. It's the, um, my travels, but also the gear I use to travel around as well. Um, in terms of, you know, and the stuff that we buy, it has to be able to be up to the task. It has to be up to the task durability wise, actually functionality wise, does it actually work? We have covered that. We haven't talked about durability. Now in here, it does have some little fans to keep the air moving, which is greatly appreciated um, given the fact that you know, this sits in my back of my tub and also sits in the cabin as well. So, you know, the aircon's not always gonna be on in the cabin. However, I'm not worried and I have had this in 35 degree heat and higher because I do stuff in the carport too. And those fans will kick on, they'll kick on pretty hard, but not the hardest. Even when I was going like say, even when I had it in 35 degree heat in the carport, it was not running to its maximum capability. So I do know that even at 35 degrees of ambient temperature, it can still stay cool using uh, those fans. So I wasn't concerned about it switching off. And of course I lock up all the tub and everything. And when I go out and do stuff during the day, so it's still running my fridge and you know it's creating all this heat as well, but those fans keep it cool. And, it, and I haven't had an issue with my fridge switching off either. So that should be an indication as well regarding the re reliability and the durability of it. Now the outside of it, you might not be like me, you might have a stacked car, completely understand. You might have a lot of kids, a lot of family members, whatever it is. So you might be using up all the seats and all the space in the cabin. Will it be up to the task of say, staying in a, you know, in, in, in a cargo box or in a, um, in the tub or something, 100%. Uh, yeah, sure, the handles, they are kind of plasticky, so the tie downs for them, although they are plasticky, as long as something hard doesn't hit them, I wouldn't be, you know, I'm not too concerned about it. But the durability on the, outs on the outside of it is actually really good too. Um, and it's got these really hard rubber corners on there too. So I'm not too worried again about things pushing into it and denting and damaging that area because it is like a really hard um, rubber there too. So it's not something that if you poke it with your nail, it's not going to chip off. Uh, and, and, it's, and the other thing as well about having that rubber underneath is that if you don't run that case is that if you can see that, I've got this table here, it's twisting the entire table because the rubber feet's on there too, the rubber feet. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is that it is, you know, in t yeah, sure, there's always going to be the question of if it th gets thrown from one side of your canopy to the other, will it break? Use some common sense. But in terms of if you do the right thing, you secure it down, um, you don't have too many dangers and stuff in there. Yeah, you, you, it is a durable unit and it's something that I would 100% trust. And, you know, I actually quite like the plastic constructions. Um, Reason for that is my my Coolman fridge. It is completely made out of plastic. Um, I don't think that there's a metal panel on the outside of that actually. And when I replaced um, my Brass Monkey fridge with the my Coolman, I was like, so I bought this Brass Monkey fridge that was whatever it was, two hundred dollars, something like that, and it was made out of metal. And then I get this my Coolman fridge, which was like ten times the price, and it's made out of plastic. I was struggling to see the benefit there and, and you know, struggling to see where the value for money was there. But what I very quickly realized is that plastic definitely out, it definitely beats out metal every single time. And the main reason for that is because metal can own, well, for one, it's conductive, so not great, especially in 12 volt setups, because if you have terminals and stuff exposed, it will spark and do all sorts of different things. So that's not a good thing either and can cause fires. But the other reason is that you know, if you put metal on the outside of these things, it makes them a lot heavier, but the density and the, and the thickness of the metal that you'd have to have on the outside of something like this, it has to be thin to make sure it's, it's still light. So that means it will dent. So if you're wondering, oh, plastic is a bad thing. For me, I love the fact that it's plastic. I wouldn't have thought about that before if I hadn't used the products like the Mike Woolman fridge and like the EcoFlow, I wouldn't have thought about that before. But now that I've used the plastic products, I'm like, yeah, okay, fair call. They made the right choice. Um, and that's 
again, you know, I think that the durability of this is outstanding and I am absolutely taking this on my trip to the Cape. I've got this big mid-year trip plan that's gonna be awesome. Taking mates, family members, everything, fishing, the whole lot is, it's gonna be a great time. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that. And this will be coming with me 100% to power the fridge when I'm at camp. Um, and yeah, I'll be getting a lot more use out of this as well and documenting how I'm using all my gear as we go up the Peninsula Development Road as well, all the way up to the tip of Australia, which I'm very excited about. So I'm um, just kind of getting everything ready for that now, doing a little bit of planning as well. So the videos have kind of slowed down a little bit. You would have noticed because obviously it takes a lot of planning to try to get a trip like that together in terms of spending that, you know, the extra, well, really the only couple hours that I have free every week uh, because of all the other projects and stuff that I'm doing as well, you know, trying to spend that time both one working on the patrol as well, but also trying to get the Hilux fitted out for the big trip that we have. And it doesn't need a lot, but it's just, I just don't want to make the wrong choices whenever I get things like the EcoFlow and, you know, and, and I'm organizing my battery systems and my cargo systems. So I spend a lot of time researching this stuff, guys. So, you know, for you at home, you're probably watching this like, oh, it's just another review of, you know, another product. But for me, I take a lot of time to make sure that it's te that I tested and it's exactly what I want. And I don't use rubbish in my setups. I only take stuff that will 100% work because I can't afford to have my fridge not work when I'm out in the middle of the bush. And people are always like, oh, well, why'd you buy a Toyota? And why would you buy this? And why would you buy that? People scrutinize that. And, I, and that's great. I really like the fact that people question me on it because it you know, makes me justify as well and go through my thought process of why I purchase certain things when I do, um, at what prices, spending certain money on certain brands, things like that. And it is purely because of it works. So if, if you ever have any questions as to why I buy any of the products that I have or I've got weird things in my setups, in my camping videos and stuff, um, it's because it works. And I'm very happy to say that this EcoFlow, it does exactly that, it works. And yes, I haven't given you a lot of specifications and stuff in terms of you know inputs, outputs, whatever. Feel free to have a look at my first video on that. You can check that out, like I said. Um, and you know, spec sheets for this, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna have a good look at the spec sheets too. But just in terms of how does an enthusiast use this product easily. Charge it up the night before you go, you have 100 amp hours of usable power in you know whatever it is 12 kilos i'll put it up on the screen however heavy it is it sits on the back seat you get to camp pull it out put it in the tub plug in all your stuff charges everything you've got all your um, outputs in the front here as well you've got usb c's usb a's you got your fast charges in there as well you've got four ac units in the back so ac plugs sockets and you've also got your normal um, accessory socket in the back there too which has a nice little cap on it. Now, one last thing that I wanna to say to you guys is I explained a little bit about the use case uh, of me using this in the past. There's one thing that I mentioned, and it's probably a big question that you guys have, is how does it go in the wet? How does it go in humid, rainy climates? Now, um, it's probably not ideal. It's probably not something that, um, you know, for warranty purposes, I should be sharing with you guys. But I actually had the EcoFlow in the rain. Um, it wasn't intentional, and I definitely would not recommend going out of your way to put this in the rain. However, I did learn a lot from it. Um, I had it in the back of my um, ute, and it just, again, sits in, in the back of the tray. And I've got this roller top. I've shown you that before in a previous video. I've got the roll track system on the top of my Hilux. Now, the problem with that is not so much the roll track itself, although it does hold water and it spits it out in different places. So water getting in the tub is inevitable, but it does dry up because it's not a lot. But the problem that I had was I had my cargo box on top and this is first thing in the morning where there's a lot of dew around. So I had the cargo um, you know, cover, it was rolled all the way back and I thought I had it shut. So when I went to wipe all the top off the, um, the cargo box, which had a lot of water on it, sitting not underneath it of course next to it um under well underneath and, and next to it was this and when i wiped all that water off it went all on top of this and i was freaking out i was like oh no uh, what am i going to tell ecoflow when it comes time to do um another review at some point uh where you know they'll be asking and saying hey how are you liking the product you know what do you like about it what don't you like about it and it's like oh well i might have accidentally put a lot of water on it now it doesn't work 
Luckily, that wasn't the case. Uh, luckily, it was all fine. I did notice and it made me look at this product a little bit differently. Uh, the water sat on top. It didn't like leak into any of the seams up here, which was one thing that I was worried about. Um, it didn't go into the unit because on the uh, fans of this, uh, of the outside of this EcoFlow, um, where the fans are, there are these angled fins, kind of like louvers. So if water comes down directly, it won't, it will struggle to get in. I mean, you'll have to put a lot of water in it for it to go down into there. So we'll kind of get caught up on those uh, little fins, on those little louvers. So it made me look at this in a slightly different um, in a slightly different way. And I was able to just dry it, of course, with a microfiber towel um, to keep it all nice and tidy. I always keep some towels lying around. But that was something that I wasn't sure how it would go with. So if you're a little bit worried about, well, how sensitive are they to water? Well, you know, again, take it with a grain of salt. I wouldn't recommend you guys going out and splashing it. But if there is an accidental rain or something like that, um, obviously, you know, and it doesn't get doesn't rain sideways into it, then you should be you should be fine. Um, and I was fine with this. I was able to clean up all the water that I had spilled onto it, and it was still powering my fridge as well. So there you go. Um, just another use case, take it or leave it. Um, but that was again my experience with it. And if you're very worried about the fact that it was going to get some water in it and it's all going to explode, it's not. Um, now, like I said, I'm gonna be taking this on one, another camping trip or two, because I need to test out the new water setup that I'm gonna be putting in the Hilux. And I also wanna get a little bit more, um, I guess a little bit more familiar with some of the uh, equipment that I'm using and also my setup as well uh, in the back of the Hilux. Because right now it's not ideal. I've got a lot of my can uh, cooking stuff in the cargo box on top of the U and it's not the best place for it. Um, I think tools and stuff that I don't use very often, uh, I think that's gonna go up in the cargo box, but putting things like your saucepan or your cookware and stuff, that's not ideal. So I'm gonna be getting some different little cargo boxes that I'm just gonna use to uh, tie down in the um, back of the, of the Hilux so that I can keep that around the campsite a little bit more. So that's just, again, a couple of things that I'm gonna be working on uh, and I need to go and test that out before I do the big, um, it's gonna be something like 10 days almost, a trip that I'm doing, possibly even more, um, maybe even two weeks, which is gonna be very exciting because that's my whole goal um, uh, you know, over the next month is I'm going to get out and do a very, very big trip um, because it's practice for my big lap of Australia. So, which I'm looking, I'm so looking forward to guys. I can't even, I can't even explain how excited I am. And I'm gonna be very happy. Uh, if you guys would like, I'll be very happy uh, to share my experience with you guys. Um, and with all the technology that we have around now, it's gonna be pretty easy to share my, uh, you know, share all my, my trip with you guys while I'm on the road. So that's it. Like I said, it was always gonna be a bit long-winded, um, but they are my experiences with it so far. You're probably thinking, are there any negatives to it? Listen, not that I can find yet. Um, I mean, I guess the only thing uh, would be price. You know, you can buy some pretty cheap lithium batteries out there. Uh, you can get some of those now, they're starting to drop down in price now. 100 amp hour lithium batteries starting to drop down to five, $600. Not good quality ones, keep in mind. So, you know, but you know, if you, the, the option is there if you want to do a cheaper option. Um, you won't get it in a package this small. It won't be as portable like it is here. So there are going to be things and you know, you need to obviously have knowledge of how to wire things up in that, um, which I have done a whole lithium setup in my Navara from way back when, uh, you know, this whole channel began. So if you want to check that out, you can check it out there. So there are options to do this DIY for a bit cheaper, but honestly, if you have the extra, I think in total, that whole setup without DC to DC charges and things like that, that whole setup cost me uh, like 1200 bucks, something like that. So um, I probably, I even did a cost breakdown as well in those videos. So I mean, for what, an extra $800, just buy this, you know, and then it's not stuck in the one vehicle. Now, again, that was something that I found, I've spoken about this before, is that when I had my, when I sold my Prada, I sold it with all the electrics in it because I couldn't get it out myself. A professional put it in there. Um, they didn't, they, they put it in spots where I couldn't get it out. And I ended up just selling the Prado with, you know, two grand worth of electrics in there. So, um, you know, it, it, that, that was not ideal. And that's not something that I would do again. And now that I've got the patrol build as well, 
guess who has got power for the patrol build? This guy. So I get to take this in my patrol with me, powering up my fridge. Um, and again, all I have to do is just tie it down. There's heaps of tie downs in the back of the patrol where I can put, charge up my fridge for the whole time and for just, you know, weekend getaways. Perfect. Don't even need to run wires to this at all while I'm traveling with it. It will power my fridge in that wall while I'm traveling anyway. So um, in terms of being flexible to be in and out of vehicles, maybe you don't plan like most people these days, you don't plan on hanging onto your full drive for a very long time. It gives you that option of, hey, I don't need to spend two grand on a setup in your vehicle where you get the exact same thing and then you're not tied down to that one vehicle. You can then take it to another one. And that's something that I've really appreciated. And the fact that now I have 100 amp hours with me, whether I take my patrol camping and I don't have to take an Esky, I can take my patrol with me and I've got this that I can take with me as well, which is powering my fridge so I get all my goodies in my fridge too. And, you know, and I can also charge up all my um, camera gear as well without having to jerry-rig something in the vehicle. So, you know, the flexibility of this is probably its biggest selling point. And if it's, and if we have a takeaway from this video, it is 100% that it is a fact that it is a portable power station and keep it in the house. I, again, another use case is, and it's not to do with full driving specifically, but I do a lot of work on my vehicles. I do a lot of work um, in the carport where it's very hot here in Cairns, if you didn't know. <laughs> and it's it's so hot here where I can just charge up and, um, and I run my fans and it keeps me cool while I'm doing little projects like trying to fix a thousand things that are wrong with my patrol. So lots of different use cases for this, not only around the house, you can run your power tools because it's got the 240 and all that sort of stuff, but just in my life in general, how handy is it to have 100 amp hours ready to go? You wanna do a little camping trip, you wanna go down to the beach, whatever it is that you wanna do, you've always got 100 amp hours ready to go. And because everything I have is 12 volt, and you know I have very few 240 volt stuff, but if I did, I can still run it. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that. I think in my personal opinion to summarize everything that I've talked about, what a great machine. I'm very thankful to EcoFlow as well for sending this out to me. Um, I would have still purchased a power station anyway, but I'm glad that a company like EcoFlow had the, um, had the, the trust in me to send this out to me, but also, um, also as well, the way that they handled everything was really good too. I think that that's something that maybe gets a little bit lost in these videos is there's a lot of backwards and forward, forwards in. There was something like 18 or 19 emails I've sent backwards and forwards to EcoFlow. And, you know, they're just like, just do what you do and just let us know how it goes. Um, share your experience with the viewers, good or bad. They didn't tell me to say anything. They, and I've dealt with some companies in the past where they have actually sent me a script and said, you have to name these things and mention these things. And we have to review your video before you put it out. And that's something that, mm, I don't know, rubs me the wrong way. And I think it sends the wrong message to you guys as well, because it's like, how can you trust someone who has a script to follow from a company? How is that being unbiased? So for EcoFlow to say, just do what comes naturally, test it out, let your fans know what happens, <laughs> fans, viewers, let your viewers know what you think of it um, and whether it's good or bad. And, you know, and, and that's, and, and they trust that. And that's something that I really appreciate. So if you're worried, and that's something that I really like about EcoFlow as a company is that they, they have that attitude and that's an important attitude to have. So I definitely back EcoFlow. Um, I'm not paid to say that, like I said, but I back them because of the way that they've handled, um, handled the business with me in terms of sending this out and then just letting me have creative free reign. So if you made it to this far in the video, to this point in the video, thank you very much. Um, please have a look at our website uh, for merchandise and stuff, which helps me make these videos and test great products like this as well. So I can buy heaps more products and show them to you guys and give you my thoughts on them. But yeah, again, I just want to say thank you to EcoFlow as well. Um, you know, it's great that companies are making you know, and engineering these awesome products and it makes our camping a lot easier and it saves us a lot of money in the long run as well because I'm going to be using this for a very long time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about this product or anything else in general, please put them down in the comment section. I appreciate you all. I'll see you down in the comment section. See you there.